Hello everyone, this is DA from e Academy, and today this video is about the relation between the inner product space and the norm space or the Banach space and the Hilbert space. So in the previous video, in one of the previous videos, I have used the relation that norm of x is equal to the inner product of that element with itself when x is taken from any vector space or more precisely we can say that that x is taken from the inner product space so this relation is true but in this video we will see that how inner product is related to the norm space and how inner product satisfies the properties of being a norm and we will see the properties of the norm space that whether it satisfies this relation or not by using this inner product so so let's continue with this by using the very first property of the very first property of a norm space the first property of the norm is that if the norm of an element is equal to zero then this thing implies that the element itself is equal to zero and if the element itself equals to zero then this thing implies that the norm is equal to zero now we'll see that whether this definition is true for a relation or not so the relation is, and we know that this is true, that this inequality is true, that it is greater than or equal to zero for all values of x. And if we take the norm of an element is equal to zero, if x belongs to inner product space v, so if the norm is equal to zero, then this thing implies that that inner product is equal to zero. And by definition of the inner product this thing implies that x is equal to zero so we'll use this relation here and we'll get the desirable answer or the desirable relation of x that x is equal to zero so, so precisely if for any value of x if it is equal to zero the norm is equal to zero then by using this relationship if this is zero then this thing the inner product is also equal to zero and if the inner product is equal to zero then by this using the inner product properties we extract that the element is zero itself and this is also true if we're going in a backward situation that if it is if it the element is zero then this imply that the inner product is of uh, the element with itself is zero and we are using here the inner product properties if we are going from here to here or from this side to this side and this is and from here to here we are using the definition the relation that we are using right now the link between the norm and the inner product so the product satisfies the first property of being a norm now the second property is talking about the second property of the norm we know that if we have a scalar a from the field x taken from the inner product space or any vector space now if we're talking about only the norm then it is it is good to say that that x is taken from the vector space so this is equal to the magnitude of a times the norm of x this is the second property of the norm so now we'll see whether the relation between the norm space and the inner product space satisfy this condition or not so we have the link that norm of x is equal to this thing for all x from v now if i'm going to take the square this will be inner product and this is for all x in v as well so this is the relation here now if i'm taking an element from the field this will be ax, the inner product of ax with ax for all x in v and a from the field. So we will use the property of the inner product that this a will be here and this a when it will be a bar or a conjugate in a some sense. And why this is a and this is a bar? There is a video on this when we have talked about the properties of the inner product space so we have a brief discussion on this thing so you can check that video as well so this will be the magnitude of a square times the 
norm of x square. Why this is equal to this? Because we have this relation. So this is mod of a square norm of x and we can write that this is equal to this thing and if we're taking the square root on both sides we get this expression and this is what the second property of being a norm uh, or the second property of a norm space so we have satisfied this property by using the link between the norm and the inner product so this inner product satisfies the second property as well now moving toward the third property so the third property says that if we have two elements from the vector space and we are going to see the norm so this norm will be equal to or i'm not going in inequality where uh, what was in the properties it was that inequality that norm of the sum of the two elements from the vector space is less than or equal to individual norms or the summation of the individual norms so we're going to see this inequality by using the link or relation of the norm that is with this inner product so we have this relation that we're using and if we are going to talk about the sum of the two elements that if we replace x by x plus y so we have this x plus y taken from the vector space so we have this thing now we'll use this thing that we have x plus y inner product with x plus y so this will be the inner product of x with x plus the inner product of x and y and the inner product of y plus x not plus y with x and the inner product of y and y we know that this inner product of x is x is, is the norm x square so this is the norm x square this is x and y and this is y and x so we can write it as two times the real of the real part of that norm of x and y plus that y and y we can write the norm square of y so this is greater than or equal to norm of x square plus two times the magnitude of the norm of inner product of x and y and why this thing happens why this is greater than or equal to this thing that in complex numbers we know that if z is any complex number then the modulus of z is always greater than or equal to the real part of the modulus of z because any complex number contains a real part and imaginary part so of course the modulus of real part is always less than that of the modulus of the whole number c z or the complex number so that is why this relation that there, there is a real number and there is whole a complex number so we can get this feel or this concept here that that is why this whole term is greater than to this term so if we have this term then we can say that the two modulus of x and y the two mod of x and y the inner product of x and y we can write this as that this is also greater than the norm of x plus two norm of x with norm of y plus y so here we are using so this is this is greater than this term is greater than this term because by the cauchy shores inequality and there is a proof of the cauchy shores inequality in in some of the previous videos so you can also check that video so this whole thing is equal to the square of the norm of x plus the norm of y now what was that here in that term that x plus y norm square is less than or equal to the square of the norm of x plus norm of y and we can write by eliminating the square we can say that by taking the square root on both side that this norm of x plus y is less than or equal to norm of x plus norm of y and that was the property the third property of the norm space so all of the properties are satisfied by this inner product and the relation that was under consideration was true and in any now we can formally say that in any inner product space we the function of 
known from that inner product space to the real space and there is a plus because it cannot be negative so in an inner product space the function from v to r given by this relation that if we take an element this is equal to the inner product of x for all x in this x then for all x belongs from to that inner product space defines a norm in that v this relation defines a norm in v if we have this function if we're taking a function of norm we have this relation now we can define a norm in v because we know that this satisfies all of the three properties of the of being a norm so this is for now looking for most of the videos and you can subscribe to this channel in order to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye